Welcome to Prime Times with Attorney Leah, where we delve into the most pressing issues of our society and listen to the most influential voices of our country. Today, we have a guest, Governor Hermilando Mandanas of Batangas Province, where he would be talking about public governance and his vision for his loving Batangas Province. Gov, you are a seasoned politician. Um, can you tell our viewers how many years have you been in public service? How long na po kayo dito sa Batangas? And who really is the Governor Mandanas? I started to get, to get interested in politics when Nino Aquino was assassinated. I mean, for an elected position. Uh, but in terms of working with the government, I started way back in 1978. Mm. Uh, I started working with... Uh, in the organization of human settlements. And the ministry at that time was uh, Mrs. Imelda Romualdez Marcos. Uh, I was recruited actually by the wife of then Deputy Minister Jolly Benitez. Uh, the wife was uh, my classmate. She was from St. Teresa. I graduated from La Salle. We were classmates during the CPA review. And then she went abroad to study some more, and then later on we worked together with Carlos J. Valdez, an auditing firm. Um, uh, so, uh, Betty Benitez, okay. Bantug Benitez. Gov, you mentioned earlier about you uh, being in a CPA review. So, we can consider you are a CPA by profession. Yes, of course, yeah. How we have a record that everybody passed. In, really? in our class. That must have been an impressive class, Governor, because um, being a governor in a widely populated city such as Batangas is not an easy feat. It's easy for some, hard for others. Let's put it that way. Okay. What do you think is the most memorable achievement or accomplishment that you ha have garnered as a governor here and uh, of course, we don't live in a perfect world, Gov. What is the most heartbreaking event or memory that you have endured as a governor here? Well, actually, no heartbreaking, as a matter of fact. It's just, uh, I consider it's a very big opportunity to be able to help. As I said, I started thinking of an elected position uh, way back in 83. I was an investment ba banker working mm -hmm. in based in Hong Kong. I was doing projects, well, of course, in the Philippines uh, and in China and uh, in Guam, in U.S., but based in Hong Kong. Okay. Although I, have offices, I had offices also in, in the Philippines, of course, and in L.A. and in Guam. So that was my job. But then, you know, the whole social political situation, even the economy, really worsened starting in 1983. I was in Hong Kong starting 1980, 81. Okay. Uh, so I thought, well, I'm doing well here. I think it's... As a private citizen. As a private citizen. So I... Why don't I really help our country directly with an elected position? I was already with an appointed position, as okay. I mentioned earlier. And I really learned that you know, much really had to be done. Well, up to now, much had to be done. Uh, that's why I'm still in politics. Yes, so uh, that was the thing that drove me, just to help. And uh, you see, heartbreaking experience, no, but challenges which I enjoy, they've always been there and they're still around. What is the most notable na challenge na natakal ninyo, Gov? You could say that really every issue is notable because we're dealing with People's fellow lives. Filipinos. Yes. And for the Filipino, every situation is of course very important for each individual. Yes. And for me, what is important to my constituency or to my neighbor or to my... They are always important to me. Go. And it's every day, it's a, different pro it's a different day, different problem, different opportunity. Yes. Gov, I want to go back 
to the first question, who really is Governor Mandanas? Because when people think about Governor Mandanas, one would think about, okay, seasoned politician, tatay ng mga batang genyo, you know, well, well versed in, you know, the politics. But I want to let our kababayans and viewers know who the real Governor Mandanas is. How many years na po ba kayo dito sa Batangas? Bakit po sa Batangas ang... Is this your hometown? Let our viewers be led into that story, Gov. Well, that means I have to start where I was born. Yes. I was born in Barangay Aplaya, in the municipality of Bawan. Uh, in, and uh, the first, let's say, awareness that I have is that, was that uh, my mother was a public school teacher and my father first you know, recognizing him, he was a storekeeper. Merong Sari Sari store in our barangay. And my father was the one tending the store. And then, of course, I graduated from the Applied Elementary School, public school. Since then and now, there's been a lot of improvement in public schools, for example. Uh, because then we were just, uh, the, the flooring of our room was just soil, we were barefooted, mm -hmm. huh? and we just have, uh, so it's a, really a, a barrio school. Yes, sir. Huh? And uh, high school, I went to Batanga City, oh. uh, and in St. Bridges College, okay. high school, as a matter of fact. So, finished there, and uh, went, he studied at De La Salle oh, okay. uh, for my university education. Yes, uh, in Bachelor of Science in Commerce, major in Accountancy. Oh, okay. I was able to adjust because, you know, coming from the province, really going to La Salle is completely different. Yes, culture shock, Gov. Uh, not a shock, but it's a uh, really, you would say, very different, of yes. course. I didn't know, for example, you were, we were <laughs> going to have our initial, your class party, the first class party in, in Wak Wak. I said, probably it's a joke that I haven't heard of Wak Wak. <laughs> then I realized, it, you know, things like those. Yes, sir. There, first, I stayed in a boarding house, of course. Uh, we, you know, we were in our room. We were, I think, eight or nine of them. One, one room and then separate, of course, from the, from the girls. Yes, sir. They also, but they only had one bathroom. So, so you have to share. Very, <laughs> yeah, share. So it's, uh, but to live up to it, that's how we started. And uh, from there, took the, met a lot of people. I mean, you have, uh, of course, that was one advantage in going to La Salle was, Mm, of course, the education is very good. Of course. But nevertheless, it's really also important the the classmates you had, the professors you the had. The network. Yeah, the network. This is how it's called right now. Yes, Kof. Kof, yeah. do you think categorically that humble beginnings inspire a person? I consider that a blessing that you could start because then you would be able to have the compassion, you would oh, yeah. be able to have the, uh, let's say, determination, yes. uh, the motivation to really help others. Yeah. Uh, starting really from almost nothing, but with prayers, of course, and especially my mother and my father, and my father also, and I was able to enter La Salle because there was a, a big gap yeah. between me, I'm the eldest, and uh, the my brother was next to me, like almost almost four years. Oh, okay. And he took up, uh, went to the seminary, so didn't have to have any to pay too much tuition. Yes, sir. So, well, I was able to adjust. Sir, I'm very inspired with what you just said. That humble beginnings, you consider it as yes, a blessing. Yes, a blessing, definitely, right? because yeah. you're able to identify with the people. Yeah, and uh, with that, Gov, you've already identified uh, the, our kababayans here. You've helped them out tremendously. What do you think, Gov, are the challenges 
of your constituents here that can be likened also to the uh, to the national spectrum itself. Ano ang mga problema or concerns dito sa Batangas na pwede rin natin ikumpara na nagiging problema rin ho sa national spectrum? I don't know. I, I always see opportunities. Yes. Huh? Uh, and with that, I focus on what's needed. For example, that's why our program is, for example, health. Yes. Even when we were kids, we were really challenged. My father almost died of tuberculosis. Huh? Had to go to Gerson Institute, which everyone knows is really uh, the it's a public hospital. Yes, there is in wards. Even my mother couldn't visit. Even myself couldn't visit my father. But was saved by this new kind of medicine. And uh, later on, even got employed with Philippine National Bank. Mm. So, and raised up from clerk messenger. A nice anecdote for me was that at that time, a Philippine National Bank was a government bank with, in Batangas, was only an agency, not a branch. And they were sharing office in a government building, which was, at that time, the office was in the basement of the Capitol. Mm. So I always tried to imagine my father there as a clerk messenger, and now I am governor. So you could see the blessing that yes. could be, and the motivation also, that really given opportunities, uh, everyone could succeed. And that's yeah. the reason why I, I think Batangas would have the biggest number of scholars, mm. uh, uh, which is our focus. We have now more than 47,000 in wow. Rome. Uh, and of course, since I returned as uh, governor in 2016 up to now, more than 150,000 have already graduated. Wow. And, uh, for, but of course, even, even during my, I started this when I first became governor in 1995. So I focused on health, because as I said, it was like in, it was, we it were- was personal to you. Yeah, very personal. My father was sickly. They were uh, all eight siblings. Six died because of lungs, you know. It's in our genes to, that's why we are, we have, we're like, what, six uh, siblings. I'm the eldest. So my name is Hermilando, which starts with an Yes, go. Yes, go. Uh, the next one, the priest, uh, Ernesto, mm -hmm. like the name of my father. And then the next one, Azucena. She just passed away uh, last December. Yes, God. Okay, and then Lourdes, and then Teresa and Helen. So even the acronym, the Hell. Yeah. Oh. That's, so that's, yes. That's the reason why, even when I first became governor, I immediately recognized the serve the volunteers, the barangay health workers. Yes. So I was the first one who gave regular monthly allowance so, just to, to, the to the barangay health, health workers, yes, barangay nutrition. We can state here to our kababayans and viewers that health and education yes. are your top agendas. Health, education, and of course, livelihood. Of course. Uh, the Batangueños, given the opportunities, they work. And that's the, the thing that is, for me, admirable. I mean, it's, it's like innate. Yes. In us. So, masasabi ninyo, Gov, ang mga batang genius talaga resilient people. Yes, I would say that. I mean, of course, you would say all but all Filipinos are like that. You could say that of Ilocanos, of Bicolanos, people from Pampanga. Yeah. Uh, but here we just try, really try to push it, and we are blessed with, let's say, infrastructure, natural. You know, we have, we have the best base for the port which has attracted so many companies so yes, easy to so so easy to market it's just about, just let them know what we have and that's why here our port we have more passengers three times more passengers yeah. than manila for example so batangas is open for investors go not only open but we invite them you encourage we encourage them we really try to uh, really we, you know, people have to work. Of course. That gives them dignity. Huh? And uh, so, but they need 
education. Mm -mm. Uh, and then they have to be healthy. That's a, these are the, the main areas, very basic. Yeah. Uh, Your agendas are interconnected, Gove. Of course. Health, education, and livelihood. One cannot survive without the other. Yes, and also the other things that would protect life and property of yes, the of people. In, like housing, like for example in case of disaster. Yeah. Uh, we have Taal volcano. We are always. Yun nga, gov, uh, na Taal volcano. We have a uh, few, ty of course, few typhoons every year. Yes, gov. We have earthquakes. It's just like any other part of the country. Yes. So we we have to be prepared for all of those. Okay. So gov. I run it like as if running any company or any association. Yes. Where in your constituency would be like your stockholders. Yes, you and, have to uh, protect them. Yes. Look at the interest. Yeah. So that is the whole um, idea. Gov, you have to forgive me for this next question. There are rumors circulating, and I have to ask you because the people, uh, some of the rumors are saying that you could be appointed as the next executive secretary in replacement of the current one right now. Can you shed some clarity or some light into that speculation, Gov? I have heard about that, <laughs> okay. uh, but I have to tell you, I have not been offered oh, okay. any, that position or any position for, from this particular government. But you uh, did hear of it. Of course. <laughs> <coughs> you hear it all, every day. Yeah. I mean, uh, so, because I think, Gov, if that were to happen, that would help out a lot with the administration, but of course, Batangas would always need someone like you as a father there. So speaking of um, needing you, Gov, what are your future plans ahead? 2025 is nearing. Right now, it's really, we j I just came from our executive, uh, we were proving executive committee. Our plans really would be what to do this while I'm governor yes. huh? and how to prepare for the next governor. That's really what we're doing right now. Tatakbo po ba kayo ulit, Gov? I cannot run as governor anymore. Of course, because of the because nine years. I'm on yes. my third term. Yes, sir. Second round. Yes, sir. So effectively, I'm on my sixth term. Yes, sir. As a governor, in between uh, three terms also yes, as sir. a congressman. So, and I must say that. Not I, uh, to say that I enjoy it is an understatement. I consider it really as like part of my life. You know, and dami niyo na pong napagdaanan as congressman, as governor. Would there be any truth that pwede rin po ba kayo tumakbo ng in any other elective position? Yes, definitely. I would uh, run for elected position. But that has to be determined, uh, well, before October. You're not year. closing any doors, Gov? No, not at all, not at all. We, we are going to have election again next year. Yes, sir. And those who want to be elected will have to file by 1st week of October. Yes, within the reglementary. <coughs> yes, yes. Gov, your wedding has been the talk of the town until now. It was really nakakakilig. Yun po ang sinasabi ng mga tao eh. Nakakakilig daw. It was inspiring. How are you uh, <coughs> into this new chapter, Gov? Because of course, being married is, a, is, a, is another thing. And being governor is another thing. So how do you balance it? Bago, bagong balik pa lang daw po kayo. Paano ho natin mababalan si Gov? Uh, the whole idea is I always <laughs> believe in unity of life. I mean, everything you do is related to whatever. And you know, my wife passed uh, more than two years ago. So after a year, you know, she, she was most helpful. I really loved my wife. Up to now, I still pray every day for her. We, no, not for her, to her. Because I know that uh, she lived a challenging but very good life when we were together. So after a year or so, so I also considered, hey, can I still have a family? Yes. And I thought, yeah, it, why not? Uh, Health-wise, uh, I, I always have been considered between 50 to 60. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my medical age. Yes. 
which is impressive, Gov. Uh, that they consider, I think, the condition of your vital organs. Yes, Gov. Well, I've never been, I've never stayed overnight in a hospital. I've never been Thank God for that, yeah. operated or anything like that. That's how they consider it. I said, well, why, why not? Huh? I mean, we have been created to have a family. Huh? So I don't have any children right now, no child right now. Yeah. Uh, so, so I married someone who's also single. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, your age, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that's how it happened. I mean, why not? That's the whole idea. But she is open that she married the father of Batangas. Mabibisi ho kayo go sa trabaho. Mabibisi ho kayo sa mga constituents ninyo. Okay lang po ba kay madam na, oh, honeymoon stage pa rin tayo, Gova. Bakit busy ka pa din? Is she okay with that? Yes, definitely. And most important of all, that's why we decided to get married, is that she... She's also, she is also open to have children because initially she was not. Then I said well, we cannot go on together because the whole idea of marriage is uh, to have children and take care of them. She understood the process and we became open. So I said, okay, let's go. But you were planning to have a very small kind of wedding mm -hmm. uh, with very few, very small. Just we'll hold it in Monte Maria. It's an area here in Batanga and then in a small restaurant in Dipa for the reception. And, but then while we were planning about it, uh, one of my former students, who is now one of mentioned, hey, you cannot do that. You are <laughs> the governor, you have, you have- You have to do something big. You have to project more, you're representing Batangas. Yeah. Huh? And uh, so you have to open up, invite all the people and really, show that uh, it could be done yes. and it should be good. So, okay, so that's what we did. Pinakilig nyo madaming tao, Gov, sa inyong wedding. Maraming napasaya, maraming na-inspire. Pero para ho sa inyo, Gov, what was the most difficult um, in that process sa wedding? Was it, were there jitters? Meron po bang meron pa rin trabaho kahit na ikakasal na kayo? Can you please um, share to our viewers po, Gov, ano ang pinakamahirap nung araw na yon? You know, every day, if you look at it, is mahirap pero madali. That's why I like my, that. That's I why like that. my, my favorite prayer, which I do every day, is the Our Father. Give us this day. It's always day. Is, is the, every day is different, every, but every day is really, I find it easy, whatever comes, mm -hmm. I don't, that's why I say, I, I don't have any problem at all. Uh, so when there is a problem, the solution comes. Yes. That's why, uh, that's why it's, it's, I don't know why, but probably it's a blessing. Yeah. I'm sure it's a blessing. You're a very positive person, Gov. Um, understanding, you know, your concepts about daily, your daily um, life, how you handle the difficulties and have it presented to you as opportunities are something else because not everybody can do that. That's a skill. So my next question would have to be, Gov, is that do you think age is a... Uh, a blessing? Do you think it's actually something that could help you further in your political career or in your personal life? Do you think age is really just a number? Age is a number, of course. Huh? But, uh, and you have just, you have different kind of ages. You have your mental age. Isip bata, halimbawa, <laughs> kahit matanda na, in terms of number of years. Meron naman bata pa, pero already has the gift of knowledge, yes. wisdom, maturity. understanding, maturity. And the same thing, meron kang physical, medical age. Yes, Kof. Bata pa, namamatay na, may cancer na, meron yung isa. Wala pang 40 years old, o wala pang 20 years old. Mahina na. Mahina na. 
So it depends on the genes, of course. Yes, well, probably I'm, I'm sure we're all blessed our family with good genes. Yes, God. So, from that point of view. Yes, God. It's not the determination of what you can do with others. Yeah. You know, for uh, others. Every here. day is a gift. Let's put it that way. I like that. Every yeah. day is a gift. Every day is a gift, which is really a gift because yes. we are, you know, yes. we, we, we aspire to inspire others every day. Yeah. So, yeah. Gov, what do you think about this administration as of now with President BBM's um, eight-point socio-economic agenda, you know, pangkalahatan eh. He wants everybody to be included, walang maiiwan, no one should be left behind. That is his mantra. So, how do you inculcate that, Gov? The mindset of our government um, ad administration headed by PBBM and transcend it to Batangas. Kasi siyempre ho, malaki ang Batangas. Hindi ho maliit na city ito. So, paano ho natin nadadala ang national mandate papunta po dito sa ating probinsya at of course, to make the lives of your constituents better? Well, the President alone couldn't do it. Absolutely. I mean, in addition to the help of God, huh, really has to work with everyone and this concept of the, the one that really interested me the most or really inspired me, <clears throat> as you said, it is all idea of samasama na kakaisa uh, and the, the dignity of the Filipino has to be pushed. Uh, all of those now will have to be not only expressed again, but uh, really believed by the people. And he, he, Yes, to, of course, inspire, promote, work, and that one. But you cannot do it alone. So everyone has to participate. Yeah. Everyone has to participate. And still, the number one problem we have would, of course, be, well, the basic problems of corruption. Huh? Yeah. Corruption. Huh? Of course, we have problems of drugs, which is also part of corruption, mm -hmm. another kind of corruption. Huh? So that is still the issue right now yeah. and the values of the people are very much affected by the behavior of our leaders and so our leaders also will have to uh, really lead the others this is mentioned and there is always a room for improvement yeah. there is always a room for improvement gov do you believe in public servant leadership yes of course i mean to be a leader, you really have to sincerely be a servant. That, it, this is basic. Yeah. A leader has to be a servant. Do you think all of the leaders in our country are, in, are emulating public servant leadership, Gov? Well, you say all, then I could categorically answer no, not all. But in Batangas, Gov, of course, as the tatay of the Batangueños, you are emulating public servant leadership, which is very vital. Because if they see a leader who does this, they yes. would be inclined to follow suit. Yeah, that, that's one of the fundamental yeah. need of a leader. He has to inspire, he has to motivate, motivate people. He has to set high goals, yes. high standards, and show himself as an example. May I ask, Gov, what if merong mga bad apples sa ating leadership? How do you, because I've, I'm seeing you as this positive person, I'm seeing you as this compassionate person who really has the heart for others, but of course, in compassion, there is also discipline. So to take it out of the basket, so that it wouldn't affect the rest of the apples. Na-experience nyo na yun, Gov, na nag-alis tayo ng apples. Of course, I've done that. And it's done in, of course, in a way that you preserve also whatever dignity left yes. the person yes. and giving the opportunity to recover. Yeah. And that has happened too. Many have recovered. We have been talking here for almost 30 minutes and I have gardnered that the qualities that you possess are that of a public servant leader. And I cannot, tell, I cannot say that to every person that I have been meeting in the political spectrum. Thank you. With that, Gov, I give you the floor. 
to talk to your constituents, to your supporters, and to everybody that na natuturuan ninyo gov law student pa lamang ho kami. Alam na ho namin kung sino si Governor Mandanas. Alam na ho namin kung ano ho ang contribution ninyo sa ating bansa. Hindi lamang ho dito sa Batangas, pero ho in the entire Philippines. I give you the floor gov to talk to the constituents, to the people of Batangas and uh, just you know, relay what you feel and your plans for them. Probably the basic thing is that the fight is every day. It's every hour. You have uh, temptations, you have uh, all over the place uh, at all times. And therefore, the, what is really needed is really you need prayer. There are a lot, only, it's, it's very much needed. Once you, you, once you pray, you realize what your weaknesses are, but you also realize that you have tremendous help, that there is no reason why you would be even afraid for anything. I mean, you are, so that is the thing. The fight should be constant. Huh? Uh, that is an issue. What you are now, you will not be probably tomorrow. So it has to be a constant fight. That, I guess, is the number one thing. And, but you have the help. And that is from our Lord and also from those working with you. And this, is, this applies not only in politics, it applies in... Everyday life. Everyday life, doing the ordinary things, but as we say, always trying to do it extraordinarily well. That is the thing. Well, like by leaving said. the basic virtues, order, being industrious, uh, being, I don't know, cheerful, happy. Yeah. Have you been sad in a day in your life, Gov? Because I'm seeing positivity so much. And, you know, just by listening to you and telling, uh, and you telling our viewers and telling me that being industrious, being positive, being cheerful, you know, would help you in the fight every day. May I ask, Gov, and you may or may not answer, but when can you remember being sad in your life, even just for one day? When I commit mistakes, when I, uh, when I fail to do what I should be doing, you know, and that happens also to me, just like with everyone. And we all fall. Yeah. That is also one thing which you have to admit. Huh? We have to have the humility to accept when we are wrong yes. and to make reparation. And when we fall, to stand up. It's just like a baby, before he could really walk well, he, has, he would really have to fall several times. But that would strengthen. It's just a matter of how you fell, but how you would stand up. That really is the one that matters. You know, before I won yes, in go. politics, yes, go. I lost twice. Oh, really? Yeah, of course. Well, entering politics, I, I was not known at all. Hmm. Or you did not give up? I tried again because I realized that, hey, I really have nothing to lose. Mm. I just have to offer myself. If they think I would be uh, qualified, please. But uh, that's why I don't buy votes. I don't never. I, wouldn't, I never have I bought votes. So that, at one point, uh, after I won, First time governor, that was the first. And then you do your work. And I assure you, you if you do your work, whatever position you you will not lose. <laughs> you will not lose yes. anymore. And I think I've proven that. You know, I am inclined to say that the best thing that you have said here was, do your work, be industrious, be compassionate, have the heart for the people. And your agenda is being... And to pray. Of course. No that one should forget important. that. Yes. Because a higher power... But that doesn't it. mean that I do not sin. I sin also. As a matter of fact, if I don't pray, I would be probably the worst politician. <laughs> Health, education, livelihood. Those three you think or you and consider. of course, protection of really life through, you know... Property and property. freedom. Yeah. Yes. Gov, um, we really... On behalf of Manila Times, we really are grateful 
for you coming in here and being interviewed. Gov, alam ko kung galing ho pa kayo sa honeymoon ninyo ni Atty. It was not a honeymoon. Ano po tawag po? It was a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage. <laughs> I stand already, corrected. I really, I really didn't realize <laughs> because I wanted to go to another place, yes. China, where it would be more relaxing yes. and all that. Especially my wife now, uh, she's a, a Chua. Yes. Probably, really, uh, <laughs> the grandfather was 100% Chinese. Yes, go. Came from China, married a Filipina, and uh, in Ibaan, and was very hard to promote the Colombo and all of those. <laughs> and why did you not go to China, Gov? Because she wanted to go to Italy instead. And that is where happy wife, happy life comes in. So I said, <laughs> okay. But then it turned out to be 10,000 times better than oh. if, I, if I didn't uh, go. Because there, you know, it was really, we went to no less than, I don't know, 30 churches. Oh, wonderful. Because we went to Rome. We met the Pope, of course. Yes. We got this blessing. We still have the, the uh, this, not only the picture, but even before we went there, our Archbishop gave us already the oh, that's wonderful. The and you know, you see the culture, the history of the people, the generosity of the leaders before. That's the kind of thing that we would like to us to have, you know. In the Philippines. In the Philippines, mm -hmm. and well, that's also what we have been, you know, brought up with. with. Our you values, have, you yeah. have to have the values. The as I say, when I was in, I'm in politics. I always say. Really, yung pagkatao, higit sa partido. You know, everybody talks about what party. Higit sa partido. And the one from the very beginning, I said, we Batangueños, well, we have been, I guess, blessed. It's been our destiny. The, the start of, let's say, the, the sense of freedom, liberty, and worth of the Filipino started with, expressed by, let's say, heroes like Mabini. And fought by heroes like Malvar. Yes, God. Like that. So, that has to be, and we have been blessed that we have been, right now, one of the richest provinces. You have the best bay. You have, we supply the Philippines. 30% of the power requirement of the country oh, comes wonderful. from Batangas. Wonderful. Our, the fuel, oil, kerosene, gasoline, 65% pass through Batangas. Yes, God. The, the submarine cables needed for our internet and all that be 400% because only here in Batangas were the cables before. Yes. But now, fortunately, other places already have. So we're only probably 65%. Oh. We have the only petrochemical plant here because it's very accessible. We have, but still, we can improve, as I, wish, as I mentioned, yes, when it comes to transportation. We have the biggest number of passengers, domestic passengers, yes. bigger than Manila. For yes, that matter. yes, I mean, and this is not because only of us, with the help of God, of course. We, we don't have any control yes. uh, why we have the best Batangas Bay. Right now, our Bureau of Customs, they collect the, the highest collection in here Batangas. in Batangas, higher than Manila higher than Manila International Container, yeah. higher than Subic yes, in their collection. So what I'm saying is that it's, we start, and of course, modesty aside, here we started really correcting this thing of giving the local government the right share. Because as I said, we were talking about earlier, President Marcos Jr. cannot do it on his own. Nobody, no president could do it. It has to be working together with the national leaders and the local yes, leaders. Yes, agreed. The local leaders are the ones that are really in front. Now, if, the soldiers. Yes. It's just like in the human body. The national probably would be the head, uh, the vital organs, but you still need the feet, the hands, and, you know. The operators. Yes. The ones who are close to the people. Yes, Gov. There are a lot of things like agriculture, like social welfare, uh, that you, it could be better done by the locals because we know the type of soil, the weather, the water condition. Uh, I mean, it comes to agriculture of course, of course. more than 
they want to stop. Stuff. But when it comes to for foreign affairs, when it comes to defense, national defense, yes. of course those are national. So, but there should be coordination. A synergy. Yeah, there should be what you call following the principle of subsidiarity. Of course. What could be done by the lower authorities? Yes. Let them do it. Do not uh, overstep. And the national government, likewise, they have to do better. And the local government should not interfere. Magrespetuhan ko. Yes. Yes. So it's it's clear what in the military, what the general can do, the sergeant cannot do. Of course. But definitely the sergeant also does things that the general cannot do. So those that this principle is very important in good governance, and that's why I fought when I saw. They're not giving the local government mm -mm. the legal and just share. Yes. So, of course, in the process, uh, I was in Congress when I was, I was, uh, mm. I was expelled as chairman <laughs> of Ways and Means. But uh, I said, no, I'm fighting for something right. So that's the only the reason why I went to the Supreme Court. And which you have inculcated this doctrine. Yeah. That would be passed on generations and generations because of because, what you thought about. Yeah, because we in local government would need what is just yes. so that you'll be able to help yes. the people and, and services which are basic, Correct. which not attended to by the one in the national. Correct. It's, it's basic and well, we started it here. Nobody at that time wanted to join me, actually. Yes. But now everybody would yeah. want to share. Finally, one, another, my former classmate yes. also from La Salle, Ted Garcia, governor mm. of Bataan, also filed and won also with me. Another case, new interpretation of the you are not just a politician, hindi ko ho kayo nakikita ang politiko eh. Ang nakikita ko ho sa inyo is public servant ho talaga. And with that, Gov, we are very grateful. And we really do hope that in 2025, it's just, of course, you cannot run as governor anymore because of, of course, the period allotted. But it would be such a waste not to have Mr. Mandanas, Mayor Mandanas, Congressman Mandanas within the public sphere, a compassionate person, a hard-working person, and most importantly, prayerful person. With that, thank you so much, Governor Mandanas, for guesting in my show. And this has been Prime Times with Dreni Leah. I wish you all a good day.